Hi, I'm John Barber, Editor-in-Chief at IDW Publishing, and welcome to Barber's Shop. This week I'd like to talk to you about a fascinating and I think important historical book called Invisible Men, The Trailblazing Black Artists of Comic Books by Ken Quattro, published by Yo Books and IDW Publishing. This massive volume chronicles the lives and work of black artists in the early days of the comics medium, some right at the very beginning, interspersing detailed biographies with illustrations of their work in and out of comics, as well as a ton of complete comic stories these artists created. Ken Quattro dug into a massively underrepresented part of comics history, a part that was always relevant but that was often ignored, one that deserves, one that more than deserves this kind of detailed and loving examination. The stories of all the creators profiled in Invisible Men are fascinating, like I said, and varied, and pulled from uh, primary sources wherever possible, newspaper clippings, letters, and the like, with first-hand accounts filling things out. The tales here are spellbinding, and I have to admit to my shame, as somebody who thinks he knows a little bit about comics history, this was new to me, uh, but I was fascinated to learn about Adolph Barreau, who had to, wor who had to keep his race uh, secret to get, a to get work, including work drawing some of New Fun Comics number one, the very first DC comic book. Or uh, Elmer Stone, who drew comics about Blue Beetle and magician Harry Blackstone, while drawing anti-fascist stories for the magazine The Challenger, all before turning to fine arts. Or Robert Pius, who chronicled black history and modern life in his comics. Or Jay Jackson, whose talents cross between commercial art and comics and editorial cartoons and posters and countless other things. There are the engrossing tales of former prisoner turned hardcore unionist Owen Charles Middleton, who drew comics like Spy Smasher and other war comics while he pursued a political career. Brilliant artist Elton Fax worked with George Dewey Lipscomb to create an illustrated biography of Dr. George Washington Carver, and Fax later started a biographical panel comic about black history called They'll Never Die. Clarence Baker worked at the famous Eisner Iger studio and was known for his drawings of beautiful women in series like Sheena and Phantom Lady, and he died at the way too young age of 37. Uh, Alvin Carl Hollingsworth, who also did work for Bob Iger, drew in the late 40s a series called Jukebox Comics with biographies of contemporary black musicians like Duke Ellington and, in a story reprinted in this book, Lena Horne, before going on to work with Harlem Renaissance luminaries like Romare Bearden. Eugene Bilbrew, who may have created the first black superhero in The Bronze Bomber, and drew art for jazz legend Charles Mingus, worked with Will Eisner, taking over from Jules Pfeiffer the comic strip Clifford that ran in the back of the Spirit magazine, but Bilbrew might be best remembered for his salacious fetish art. Quattro tells the story of all Negro comics, the first comic published, edited, written, and drawn by black comic creators. And he recounts the story of Calvin Lee Massey, who went from comics to being the only black sculptor at the Franklin Mint, and then on to a brilliant career as a fine arts sculptor and painter. Uh, Ezra Jackson formed an interracial, an interracial work partnership with Maurice Whitman and produced Airboy comics, among a whole lot else. Plus, Jackson produced a daughter who grew up to be Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. Meanwhile, Ezra's high school classmate, Alfonso Green, did work for Stan Lee at what would soon become Marvel Comics. But Green lived a double life, as he was also involved in gangs. One crime comic Green drew, reprinted in this book, eerily corresponded with the crime Green was arrested for, and according to Jackson and Green's other classmate, artist Alex Toth, Eleanor Roosevelt once testified on Green's behalf, citing his incredible artistic ability as a reason for clemency. Now, that kind of story, by the way, is where Ken Quattro's writing really excels, because that's a fascinating anecdote to me, and one a lot of people would probably be happy to leave right there, just like I did. But Ken digs deeper, looking for corroboration and looking for the truth. He'll tell you the legend, but he'll print the truth, too. Now, the history is lavishly illustrated with reproductions of original art and of original printed comics done in the inimitable Yo! book style, where you feel like you're right there holding the comics themselves. Between the wonderful production values and the engrossing prose, I felt like I was a part of history, and I felt my horizons broadening, and I hope I'm not alone, because these are pioneering artists whose contributions deserve much more acclaim. 
So visit the IDW website or your local comic book store or bookseller and check out Invisible Men, the trailblazing black artists of comic books, written by Ken Quattro, with an introduction by uh, comic scholar Stanford W. Carpenter, PhD, and edited by Craig Yo. And as always, let's use this time to connect and keep the IDW community active. That's all for this week. Remember, you can keep up with IDW on social media and check back here every week for news and updates. Thanks for watching.